greetings dear diary in this the 142nd birth week of the mahatma i am reminded more and more of him and his message not just because we have this annual ritual of talking about the mahatma for a day or a week and then forgetting about the father of our nation for the rest of the 360 odd days so this there's quite a lot of stuff which you read during this period however what i really spent my time wondering invested my time wondering was in the relevance of his message i think his message is even more relevant today than it was 60 70 80 years back why possibly because all great messages are more or less timeless in the human time frames that is so his message is timeless as is the message of one siddharth gautam as is the message of lao tzu and so forth so why do i say that in our world of instant communication and gratification of increasing tension and terrorism of ballooning fear and anger of reducing emotional and spiritual connectedness of parched earth and souls why do i say why do i feel that his message is even more relevant today not only is his stress on non violence becoming more and more important even his economic ideas seem to be the only way out of this morass that we are slowly sinking into to me he was as much the father of the nation as he was no he is the economist who can lead us into facing the ecological imperative that is engulfing our already doomed consumerist way of life why do i say that because he certainly had a better handle on the interplay of the three e's as i call them as many people call them than those brilliant talking heads that you that you see on television and and on internet and elsewhere who go by the sobriquet of uh, expert economists he understood the interplay of the three e's way better than them what are the three e's i mean i've been living and breathing that for a while now and of course that was the phd thesis which i had or rather the phd proposal that i had made and eventually stopped formal work on three e's economy of course economy is the life blood of our of our civilization of our of our lives of our collective lives because that's what economics means 
managing the household and when we talk of economics we talk about managing the household of the human species what is this what are the other two e's one of course is ecology now oftentimes people tend to presume that ecology is a subset of economy that's why uh, you know you have a branch of economics called ecological economics uh, however it's it's really foolish to think of ecology as a subset of economy you see we the human species are a subset of the ecosystem that we live in and economy is a subset of the human society so essentially economy is a sub subset of ecology why is it important because if the larger set is not there or is in facing trouble the sub subset will obviously be in trouble and part of the reason why we are screwed today is because we have failed to appreciate this relationship we have actually inverted the relationship and we have allowed the talking heads and we have allowed big business and we have allowed the corrupt politicians and uh, bureaucrats and what have you to and corporate world corporate world is the is the biggest corruption that can really exist to 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 get away with it and corrupt us the general society along with it well anyway that's that's uh, a plaint that i will make another time dear diary right now i just want to talk about the appreciation that the father of our nation had of this interplay had of this relationship between economy and ecology well what's the third e the energy energy is the prime mover of the ecosystem that we live in so it is energy that moves ecology and thereby moving the sub subset called economy now of course the mahatma understood these the, the the real interplay between these three because if he did not he would not have lived a life of simplicity that he did of course uh, he did make the statement or statements to the to the same effect that it cost his friends a lot of money to keep him in poverty true but he was sending a message it didn't cost a lot of money to the general society to allow gautam buddh to live in poverty not poverty really but voluntary poverty i think the better word for that is simplicity similarly if he did not appreciate this interplay the father of our nation he would not have stressed on the need to have largely self sufficient villages 
which is in the long run after the subsidy that we are receiving from the easy uh, to get energy from hydrocarbons goes away well uh, so on this day dear diary I again thank both Mohan and Mohandas for giving us the Mahatma and yes I did again watch some of the stuff which I had watched earlier, uh, specifically I did watch Chris Martinson's crash course, complete course I watched and I also watched uh, this, the 40 or so minute summary that uh, he has that is available on the internet. I also watched again the long interview I think 80 minutes interview of Michael Rupert which is available as as a, as a movie uh, by and goes by the name collapse so crash course by Chris Martinson and collapse of Michael Rupert Chris Martinson's um, is probably what I would have made Chris Martinson is an ex-vice president of a fortune 50 company and uh, um, is a bit more action oriented, bit more uh, optimistic. Uh, Michael Rupert's is uh, not that optimistic but then it does put the facts more starkly and probably more realistically well anyway uh, both are available and I uh, um, and both are available on the internet and I have also written on that it's stuff is available uh, on my blog and on my channel so this is what was the primary activity which I did in the last week or so I thought I should share it with you dear diary